I think I have been ignorant for way too long. And maybe, maybe it's not even me to blame. I mean, there are so many new things popping up in front-end development or development in general that it's just impossible to keep up. About a week ago, I shared this tweet on Twitter where I complained about Yarn taking up 55 gigabytes of my hard disk space. And that's only the cache that isn't even counting all of the node modules that it uses as well. And then there was not one, two, there were three people telling me, did you use PMPM yet? Why didn't you? And then I said, I never tried it, but I feel there's only a very small percentage of people using this. And that could not have been further from the truth. There is already a lot of people using PMPM, including very big monorepos as well, like for sales repo, turbo repo, next, view, all of them are actually using PMPM already. And I don't think I'm one of the last people to convert, at least hopefully not, but maybe I'm late to the party here. Because let me tell you, PMPM is just so, so fast to work with and it saves me a bunch of hard disk space as well. So in today's video, I pretty much want to prevent you from sticking around another year with Yarn or NPM and show you how much quicker and more efficient PMPM actually is. Because that is what PMPM stands for. It's a Performant Node Package Manager. Performant NPM. And it's firstly a lot faster, but also really efficient because it does not copy all of your packages to node modules. It uses a principle called symlinks, which are mainly links to a different place on your hard drive, to the cache. And it makes a lot of sense, right? Why wouldn't you do this if there's 500 times the exact same package that you're using? Because NPM and Yarn are just copying all of these files over and over, which means that there's 55 gigabytes and maybe even way, way more in all of the node modules folders. And especially if you're working on a lot of different projects like me, myself, with all of the videos I create, but also if you work at an agency, for example, then you have all of these projects laying around with all of the node modules, all the different versions in your cache as well. And then PMPM is really, really helpful for you. So in general, it's, PMPM is pretty much the same as NPM or Yarn. You just install the packages, commands are almost the same. You can go through the docs yourself on pmpm.io. Um, there isn't much to it. It even has its own variant compared to Yarn workspaces. So workspaces, monorepos are also just gonna work because there's already a lot of these monorepos out there already using PMPM instead of Yarn. So this video is rather short. I mean, just go for it, try it, experiment with it. And they even made it super easy to convert your NPM or Yarn project to PMPM by running PMPM import. It will look at your package lock or Yarn lock file and it will just convert everything over. That's it, nothing you need to do furthermore. From that point on, you can use PMPM. So the only thing I still want to do is show you how much quicker and efficient that PMPM is compared to both Yarn and NPM with an example repo. Um, but to me, that's only a minor thing. The speed is super nice because it's very fast, but it's also the disk usage that I'm really, really excited about. And because in the end, all of those tools do pretty much the same thing. It doesn't really matter whatever you use as long as it's fast and it doesn't put a lot of stuff on my disk that I don't want to, or at least clears it really efficiently, then I'm fine with whatever tool is around there. If next week Yarn uh, releases a new update that makes things work even better, I just as well switch back. But the thing is, if you're stuck in a certain workflow, you usually keep stuck in that workflow and you just don't upgrade the tools you're using anymore but there could be really nice things out there that a lot of people are already using that in this case, I was not using yet. So time to run a really quick test case so you can see how much quicker that PMPM actually is. So let's quickly hop over to the terminal. And what you then see is I have opened six times the same directory in my terminal. 
So what I want to do is on the left side, I want to run NPM both with a empty cache as well as with a non-empty cache. In the middle, it will be yarn. On the right side, it will be PMPM. And then we can just compare the differences between them. For all three package managers, I cleared the cache already. So if we run the first command, it will be with an empty cache. So let's start with npm on the left side, where we also prefix it with a time command so we can already see how long the command takes. If we run npm install, then it will take quite a while because it's of course really fresh, there's no cache at all. So let's fast forward through this. So when that's done, you see that NPM run in a total of 56 seconds. And this is a pretty small example app only containing Vite and React and a few, few dependencies. But if we then remove the node modules and then we leave the package lock in place and we run this again, then this will of course take a lot shorter and that is a total of 2.1 seconds. However, if we would do the exact same, but then delete both the node modules as well as the package lock.json. Then it will take a little bit longer because it also needs to resolve all of the different dependencies, which is 3.1 seconds. So if we start doing the same with yarn, then we are again going to remove the node modules and we're also going to remove the package lock. And then we're going to run yarn with an empty cache. And once that finishes, you already see that Yarn, in this case, is even slower than NPM if it has a clean cache. But now let's remove the node modules again and run Yarn with its own cache in place. So let's delete node modules and leave the Yarn lock file in place. And then we run Yarn again. And then you see that it takes about the same time as NPM does. And now what happens if we delete both the node modules as well as the yarn lock file? Let's try that by again deleting the node modules and then the yarn lock. And then again, we're going to run the yarn command. And that takes a total of 37 seconds, which is 10 times as long, over 10 times as long as NPM took for the exact same process. So, now, finally, let's switch to PMPM. Let's delete both the node modules as well as the yarn lock file, and then we're going to run PMPM install. And then you see that PMPM is also telling us that the first time it needs to download all of these packages from the internet, just like any package manager would have to. But it's also really nice to see that it's doing that and also in a second to see that it's reusing it from its own cache. So the very first time it had to install and download all of these packages, PMPM took only 39 seconds, which is really nice. But I mean, it's just a very small win, right? So the next time, if we're going to delete the node modules, but leave the log file in place, and then again, we're going to run pmpm install. Then you see that it took 2.7 seconds, which is just a little bit longer than both npm and yarn did. So now is the final step. If we're again going to remove the node modules, but this time also the pmpm log file, and then we're going to run pmpm again. You again see it's reusing all of these packages. And it's also reevaluating the log file, of course, but then it takes about 10 seconds, which is the third of the time of yarn, but still three times as long as NPM took. So even though it's faster at the very first install, eventually all these package managers get pretty close. And next week, these statistics might be different again. And maybe for one of these, my internet connection wasn't that stable suddenly. Um, but in the end, the really cool thing is that if I now would open this in Visual Studio, and I would go to my node modules directory, 
You see, firstly, that I only have all the packages that I'm using in my node modules instead of all of the packages they use as well, because that's hidden inside the pmpn directory. But also, you see all of these arrows, and it actually means that it's pointing towards a different place on my hard drive. It is a symbolic link linking to the cache of pmpm. So that means that this directory is not a lot of kilobytes because of all the code that's in there, but it's only a few bytes because it tells my Mac to link to a certain place on my disk and just find the code over there. So that means that there's only one instance of this code on my hard drive and not 25 times if I would have 25 similar projects. And that to me is a really, really the best part of PMPM because that will hopefully mean that I finally can save quite a bit of disk space and I won't run out of disk space before my video. Ha, <laughs> I got you there, right? Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you like this video. It was a little bit different type of video this time, but I think it's also super valuable to learn something about the different toolings that we're using because if you're just stuck in your workflow, you just might not look further towards the new things just like me. So just let me take the time to research these new things and teach them to you so you can just focus on building cool stuff on the internet. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next video.